There's things in life you simply need to know But sun and rain and trust in letting go It takes a bit of suffering Sleepless nights and wandering Before you make it safely to the end The end, the end So like... Hey all my peeps, this be Chicken Man here for the next episode of Season of Twelve Colors. This has turned out to be quite an interesting little experience where we can just sit back and enjoy this little friendship that's blooming and it really is turning out to be something special so I hope you've been enjoying it as much as I have. So with that, all the introductions can be taken out of the way and we can go on to chapter four. Ooh, so tired. Sleep with this guy, I'm telling you. Deprived of sleep, I was made to play with the girl for the long morning. After lunch, I threw myself onto the bed, practically falling to pieces. That's how you end up after playing with little kids. Kids are always trouble, no matter if this one or that. Come on, you know you enjoyed it, buddy. Hmm? Something emerged. It quickly faded away into the darkness of sleep. <sighs> I had a wonderful rest. Wondering at what time it was. It's already past four. Uncle was sitting at the doorsteps, shaving bamboo strips. He answered my question. I didn't want to wake you. You slept so soundly, he added. So it's four. Wait, how could I have slept away so many hours with just a nap? Four, but after lunch. I had promised Jasmine that I would visit in the afternoon. Now I was bound to be late. I jumped out of bed and stepped into my sandals hastily. What's up? Unhurried, Uncle asked from behind me. Oh, just an appointment with a friend. I put on a t-shirt and ran away to into the garden. Ha. Huh. So you're starting to make friends around here. Was he making fun of me? In between the sound of shaving bamboo, his carefree voice came through. Oh, it's just one kid. A girl about the same age as me. The noise stopped. I will be back soon. I used the garden gate closed and dashed off. He seemed to have said something after that, but I couldn't hear it clearly and quickly dismissed it. I ran into the woods. Noon had long passed, yet the heat was still present. I was starting to sweat from running. Hmm? Strange. Had I lost my way? It felt like something was a little different from yesterday. There came through the trees the sound of kids play fighting. <laughs> and someone sobbed in a soft and low voice. Duh. I pulled away the branches. The same old clearing was still there. The little wood house stood intact. The kids were new. There were a bunch of them running after each other on the meadow and throwing things around. And Jasmine? She huddled up by herself crying. Hey! What are you kids doing here? I stepped forward, fists clenched. In an instant, the troublemakers fled away into different directions. Little punks. Uh, anyways. Kids are boisterous. They'll be kids. I can't really say much about that, but it is unfortunate. For half a second, I couldn't decide which one to chase. At last, I managed to catch one of them. The kid's feet were slow, and he fell flat when he tried to run away. Keep it. I picked up the straw hat from the ground and put it back on Jasmine's head. Hey, what's there to cry? How could you get bullied by these little kids? They're so much younger than you. I'm sorry. Still sobbing, Jasmine held the hat from falling with one hand. Her other hand was busy wiping away tears. That's why you're an idiot. You're sorry. You shouldn't be sorry. This kid sh should be sorry. I let go of my clench around the kid's back collar and shoved him in front of her. Apologize. 
I made the scariest face possible with my hand firmly on the kid's head. I... I am so sorry. Not loud enough. Say, I am really sorry. I am really, really sorry. The, the kid, mud all over his body, had no choice but to lower his head. Of course, I was forcing him to do it. Wow, apparently I've been at this a while, my D's cold. <laughs> it's okay. Tracks of tears were still visible along Jasmine's cheeks. You, you, don't, you don't have to do this. She took out her handkerchief and wiped the kid's face. Come on, you were just bullied. I didn't expect you to be angry, but at least don't be so kind. Now I was in an awkward position to play hero. But Jasmine stole glances at me guiltily. He's hurt. She cleaned away the blood from the scratches on his knees. Ha, whatever you want. Oh, please hold on. For a moment, she seemed to suddenly remember something and clapped her hands. There's bandage in the house. I'll go fetch it. She quickly stood up and ran into the house. And fell flat. We stared at her, tripping over herself. <laughs> after all the fuzz, after all the fuzz, we came to the final conclusion of this case. Since the victim did not wish to pursue it then any further, you could say the whole thing was settled at a court. By the way, the bandages did come in handy. We put a piece on the kid's leg. And three in total for Jasmine's arms and knees. She's really an idiot. So was I, though. Heh. Hey, hey, get up. Her soft voice was as persistent as mosquitoes. Go away already. I'm tired. It's mysterious, though, how I got to know someone who would bury themselves in a mountain of books. Let's not even start talking about tripping over oneself and getting bullied by kids much, much younger. But I have apologized. No, that wasn't you, stupid. That was... me. Pulling grass off the ground, I kicked myself mentally for not coming earlier. For some reason, though, I felt like this had happened before. Couldn't remember. Something vital was missing, and then... Oh look, there's our main character. <laughs> yeah, main characters. Not got much going on. It was her dress bub rubbing against the blades of grass. Jasmine sat down beside me. I do love that little ray of sunlight, though. Like, I, I, I don't know if it's just always there, but it does look beautiful. Her voice was as soft as the spring breeze. Now, this ain't something to brag about, but... The breeze brought with it the scent of wildflowers and grass. But I just want to let you know... I was so happy when I saw you. She wasn't looking at me, she was looking at something in the distance, even further than the dome of sky wrapped in treetops, talking to herself. Just like in the fairy tales, you know? The prince comes to the princess's rescue. She turned to me. Her smile was bright, almost dazzling. I knocked her forehead lightly with my knuckles. Come on, had you ever seen a prince like this before? I tried to dismiss it with self-mockery. She shrugged and smiled, her eyes narrowing. Mm, yes, huh? You're right. Most princes aren't lazy little fellows like you. Hand on her chin, Jasmine thought about it for a while. Because you're Mr. Rabbit. Mr. Rabbit who? I would have knocked you a lot more if it wasn't that much trouble to get up. But for today, 
I guess it's not bad to play Mr. Rabbit once in a while. 那来着纸飞机吧，兔子先生。Let's make paper planes, shall we, Mr. Rabbit? Swinging her feet back and forth, she kicked off her sandals. Among the grass was the girl's slim ankles making shuffling sounds. Too bad I'm so tired today, Your Highness. I turned over trying to cover up my quickened heartbeat. Huh, 年轻人这么没精打采的可不行啊。<laughs> But you're so young. Where's the spirit? And she's the one who said that. She looked a lot younger than her age, and yet she was starting to sound like an old person already. Talking about age, for some reason, Jasmine seemed to be different from my memories. She had left a lot more sensible and mature person impression a few years ago. Breaking through the forest, the rays of the setting sun sparkled for a moment. Jasmine's cheeks glowed with a faint, faint blush. What had this girl been like before? Hey. hey, still sitting, Jasmine threw a newly made paper plane. You do like paper planes, don't you? Hmm. 很喜欢 Yes, I like them a lot. She smiled, still blushing a little. 因为啊，是很喜欢的人教给我的东西 Somewhat, someone taught me how. Somehow, someone I really, really like. Someone you really liked, huh? Your dad or mom? Nothing to do with me either way. <laughs> 都不是啊 Nope. With a big smile on her face, Jasmine turned to me. I only had one friend ever. Wide brim straw hat, pure white dress. She looked down at me. Her face was reddened by the sunset's glow. The girl named Jasmine. 是兔子先生呀 It's Mr. Rabbit. With a mischievous look on her face, her silvery laughter echoed throughout the meadow. Okay, this this raises a lot of questions. Questions that I can't wait to find the answers to, and I I we're learning bit by bit while just sitting back and relaxing at the same time, you know. Hmm. Ah,、uh, feel free to comment like what your guys' theories was like. I don't know why, but This reminded me a lot of because of Win Dixie, and I don't know why it did. Like the 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 uncle seems to know something's up with this particular case, and Jasmine almost seems like something out of this world, more or less, if that makes any sense. But. We don't know. There's a lot of things that we don't know, so we're just gonna have to find it out as we go along. So let's just work for that. So, <laughs> with that, see y'all, see y'all, peeps. This be Chicken Man out. Bye bye. Oh wow, you're still here. Perfect then. Um,、uh, while you're here, make sure to check out the video to the other side. It's probably something you'll enjoy. And if you still got some time to spare, why don't you check down below in the description as it contains special things like my Patreon and other information. Later, peeps.